hey guys welcome back to my channel today i will be showing you guys um how i work on my nail trainer hand and i do have to say that it is not the best thing to work on this nail trainer hand it's good for practice and you know if you want to practice designs and stuff but it is really really annoying um to work on this hand sometimes a little tips come off because i'm used to like working on a real hand and sometimes you know you're a little more I guess aggressive on a real hand and if you're more aggressive on a nail trainer hand you know the tips want to come off and stuff so yeah so here I'm just apply applying my acrylic um, this acrylic mix I mixed it with like peach from young nails the, the cover peach and the cover pink and some some clear powder yeah so yeah I'm just do there and just doing the the well yeah i was gonna say overly but it's not overly because there's tips but yeah i'm here i'm just doing the acrylic work and just figuring out where i'm gonna place my beads and stuff and just trying to be as neat as i can i'm trying to finish this video before my client comes and whatnot it takes a little while to edit and update I mean upload but yeah I'm just trying to finish it so you guys can see I really wanted to do the jelly nails the glass nails but I accidentally forgot and put these natural tips instead of clear tips um but yeah I will be doing a video on those jelly nails or the glass nails whatever you want to call it there are different ways of doing them so I will be showing you guys different ways of doing them so yeah so then i think i have three different ones so yeah so here i'm doing the v-shape french um because this is the style i want to do i've actually this was my first time actually attempting this um french type of style i usually do just like the deep smile line so this is like a v smile line and i was like pretty impressed i just honestly forgot also when i was doing the video to carve it out it does look a lot better when you carve out the smile line with a file but it still looked decent. My my smile line wasn't that bad, you know. So yeah, that's how I do that. And then I'm going to show you how I do the middle one. The middle one's just going to be the same thing as the pinky. I'm just going to cover the whole nail. And I did the same with the pointer with like the other one, your ring finger the ring finger that i did with the v that's what i'm going to do with the pointer just not going to show it in this clip here but you'll see it afterwards but yeah i love how the powder came out like you guys can mix your own powders it's actually pretty cool to you know adjust the color of any powders you have because sometimes um certain colors look better on certain people so it's nice to like sometimes you know customize and make them a nail bed pow powder that would go with their skin tone it's really cool to do that so yeah here i'm just trying to figure out where i need more more acrylic so it looks even because the more even it looks the less filing you have to do of course and then the top just to give it some more oomph on the top Okay, cleaning up the cuticle area, make sure nothing's touching the skin, supposedly, but you know, this thing doesn't have real skin, but you know what I mean. It just has to look nice up there. Alright, so here, I was going to, like I said, I wanted to do the jelly nails, but I thought about it when I was like mixing the color. I'm like, wait a minute, I have natural nails on this. And I was like, oh, well, we'll see what happens. But it still came out pretty nice. Just just didn't give the jelly effect, of course. So, yeah, I saw someone on YouTube use gel in their monomer. And I'm like, what? That's crazy. How is that going to work? But it hardened and there was no problems. So you could use gel polish to color your your monomer for acrylic application. Um, I'm actually using Young Nails Liquid and SC Gel. And this color is so beautiful, so I really wanted to try it. Yeah, I'm just mixing that there with the back of my cleanup brush with the little dotting tool side. 
So yeah, so I took like this brush that I didn't care about. It was like a 3D brush, supposedly a 3D brush that I ordered online. Of course, I ordered it on AliExpress. You got to be careful because everything on there is not good, especially when it's really, really cheap because obviously it comes out cheap. But I'm going to use that brush to apply the, the color acrylic because I didn't like how... Um, I didn't want to ruin my brush basically. So here I'm adding, um, on a different, on a different thing, on the, sorry, in a different little supposed dabbing dish, but I added all the one that I already had, um, mixed up and I put it into just a bigger container, I guess. And it just, I don't know, cause I think I added some polish that I'm going to use on the pinky. I also added some of that polish in there. And then I also added, let me see, I think I added another gel polish, but I don't remember. But you could just play around with the colors, guys. You get really nice colors if you mix them, if you have different gel polishes. Or you could add regular polish. You just got to make sure you want it really pigmented because sometimes it may look pigmented. But when you apply it, it's very, very, like, translucent, clear. Like, the color it won't come out as, you know, vibrant. So try to make sure you had enough color in there. I learned that the hard way when I used to use the Young Nails like art drops. I think that's what they were called. And I was like, why isn't it coming out the color it should? But I wasn't using enough. So yeah. So here I'm just going to show you guys how I apply it. And it does apply kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't apply very neatly. It has a weird consistency. But that's because I think, um, I think it's because it's mixed with the gel. I'm not sure. So yeah, I'm just applying it there on the bottom of that V smile line on the free edge. And I'm just bringing it up and just trying to adjust um, it to be evened out as much as it can be. But yeah, like I said, this is very, like this, the consistency of this was really, really off. So it was a little hard to maneuver around. But yeah, look how pretty that color is. It's really, really pretty. I really love it. I just wish that I remembered to put clear tips, but that will be for another video and you will see what I mean. But it to me, it still came out really nice. It's not as te tedious as it seems. It's just, I guess, the consistency of the acrylic, like I said. Just making it look a little funny when it was moving around. I believe, like, these two colors look beautiful. Like, the color of the, the covered acrylic that I made myself. And then the color of this uh, monomer that I made myself. It's gorgeous. Okay, let's make sure you get into those sides. Yeah, like I said guys, I, I'm using this brush because I didn't want to ruin my other brush. Because I remember when I would use the Young Nail Drops, it would ruin my brush a lot. And it was really hard to take out the color and I didn't want that to happen to my brush. Especially when I'm using um, gel. I don't know what that would do to my acry acrylic brush. So I was not trying to take any chances. So yeah, almost done there. Okay guys, so here I'm just going to start filing my side. I believe we call it the lateral folds of the, of the nail bed. Um, yeah, I really don't remember a lot of the terminology in school, but I try to remember as much as I can. So yeah, we're just going to file the sides, make sure they're nice and even. And there's, like, if this was a real person, you don't want any of the skin attached to their, I mean, sorry, you don't want any acrylic attached to their skin because everything does not look beautiful. And like I said before, your nails could lift like that because of the acrylic stuck to the, to the skin. So yeah, let's make sure we take all that acrylic off the sides. And let's see. See, I was cleaning my brush there just because I forgot. I'm like, oh yeah, I have to clean it off. I'm checking if it's hardened. And this actually took a little while to harden, I guess, because it was mixed with the gel. But it hardened eventually. It didn't take as long as you would think. So yeah. 
I'm still doing the sides, I guess, and making sure they're nice and neat. And you see, guys, these things come off sometimes. Like, it's so annoying. I mean, but if they're for practice, they're for practice, so it's not a really big deal. All right, so now I'm going to take my medium drill bit and I'm going to go around the supposed cuticle. Oh, there it goes again. I'm going to go around the supposed cuticle and I'm just going to start filing the surface of the nail. Make sure it's nice and even. And I feel like I work so much different on a nail, on a nail hand trainer, whatever you want to call it. I work differently on this than I would on a, a real client because it just it's really hard to work on these things. They make it difficult. I actually, I don't know, like, I've seen those new ones that look like real hands, like real people hands. And I always, like, it, it, it kind of creeps me out. People get creeped out by this hand, and it's plastic, and the other one looks like a real human hand, so I imagine. But I don't know. They are pretty expensive, I've heard. So I don't know if I would actually invest in one. But, yeah. Going around the areas with my bit trying to smooth that out as much as I can. I am using a medium bit. If I did, if I forgot to mention, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but yeah, it is a medium bit. And these are, you can use a medium bit and a fine bit if at the end you don't want to buff. It makes it easier because it gives, it's less work. Like, but my, myself, I like to use a medium bit, sometimes a coarse bit, depending. Like a coarse bit I use when I'm removing polish sometimes like gel polish and then you would have to like you know use a a buffer of course to smooth it out more but a lot of people use a medium um bit so they can just you know get right to the point and start polishing right after um but me i i just don't like it because i feel like there's still like sharp like scratches on the nail after you use a drill bit and i like to just buff it out with like a fine sanding band on on your drill or i like to um use a little buffer or i just do both and i will show you what i mean so i'm going to finish up the filing with my medium drill bit and see here i took a sanding band and i'm going to smooth that out uh, this is a fine sanding band again like i said but yeah so that's why some people like to use fine um drill bits you can find fine drill bits and use that as well and be okay but this is what i'm doing now Sometimes I I do things differently. Some days I'll use a fine one. Some days I won't. It just depends on my day, I guess. So yeah, I'm just going around, smoothing it out even more with the fine tanning band. Going around the cuticle. Up and down motions. I feel like I could have followed this one better, but like I said, I was mostly practicing design, not perfection in this video. And there goes the tip again. <laughs> so yeah. So next, like I said, I like to buff it out with a little buffer. And I do use individual buffers for every client. I just find it sanitary. And I wouldn't want to use the same things on, you know, I actually, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but I use one nail file and one buffer for each client and they're tossed in the garbage. Or they can take it home, but usually never. nobody really likes to take it home for whatever reason. So I just throw them in the garbage. Alright, so here I'm just cleaning out the nails with some alcohol and a cotton ball. I don't usually use cotton balls to do this because it starts putting lint everywhere from the cotton. Um, I usually use, like, I cut up, like, paper towels into little squares and they're, like, obviously lint-free. So there's no mess afterwards. Here's, there's, like, a whole paper towel I'm using here just to make sure there's no lint from the cotton ball. I work very differently when I'm actually on the nail trainer than I would on a person. Alright, so next, what are we doing? So next, I'm going to take Sugar Daddy by Estee. I think it was Sugar Daddy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Sugar Daddy by Estee. You could use like a like a nude or a pink or whatnot, like a, like a, like a flesh color. Um, for this because we're going to be doing an ombre on this nail so I'm going to let that dry and like I said it is so annoying to work on the hand because a client would actually help me like lift their hand up so that the nail doesn't touch you know their, the cloth 
and get stuff all over it because I just noticed some of the cloth from the towel got on there or dust or something. So it's easier to work on a real client. So if you guys are like in school and you're learning on this, it is very different than if you were working on a client. And trust me, you would love working on a client rather than working on a snail. I'm a snail trainer. <laughs> all right, so next we're going to take the middle. Um, we're going to do the middle finger and I'm just going to mix up some glitter that I already have in hand and I'm going to take a little separate, um, container. Um, this is like, um, I don't, I don't know what kind of glitter that is, but I think it's like, I know it's a young nails glitter. I just don't remember completely. Put some blue in there. Put some, I think I put green. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to put some green in there. It's, this, these are Young Nail Glitters. And you guys don't have to get glitters from companies. Go buy glitter at Michael's. Go buy glitter um, in Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Store, Walmart. You, like, it just depends. I will tell you guys that some glitters do bleed, meaning, like, they stain. The color off will come off. But a lot don't. So don't be afraid to get glitters from stores and you'll save more money. Here, I'm just going to apply some hard gel. Uh, you can actually, no, hard gel, sorry. <laughs> some top coat um, gel. But I would recommend you could just use like a base coat. You don't have to use your top coat. And I think I used my top coat here and I just wasn't thinking. But yeah, whatever to get it to, get, to stick. You could even use blue polish, anything that matches the glitter. Um, And then, you know, so yeah, I just apply it with my cuticle pressure. And then I... And then I, you know, press it down a little bit, make sure it's on there. And I just want to make sure it gets in there really well. Okay. Now we're just going to cure it. I think I only cured it for like 10 seconds. I wasn't even on it for that long. And then I'm going to brush all that glitter off. Okay, I'm just going to add some gel top coat and I'm going to cure that under the lamp. I did use this different top coat that I don't really use only for like glitter stuff. So just in case it gets glitter in there, it doesn't go on any. If I use my regular top coat, um, I don't want any glitter in that. So it doesn't go on anybody else's nails that do not need glitter on. So also that glitter now, I actually buff it out because when you do put top coat on top of glitter, it gets gritty and it doesn't feel smooth. So I like to take my file and actually sand, like I like to um sand it down or like file it off the grittiness to it. And then I like to put top coat and then it's actually smooth. So that, there I am taking off the grittiness off of the glitter now. Okay guys, so next I'm going to show you guys how to do the pinky. I will be doing the ombre. You want to take the nude color, the lighter color, and then you want to take the darker color, or however you want to do it, and you're going to start plaiting it down or, or sponging it down. And yeah, the pigment sometimes doesn't show up, so you got to kind of redo it, but don't over polish or yeah don't don't put it on right away if you already put enough like right here i put enough the color starting to show so if i were to go on it right now it's not gonna stick too well so yeah like i'm gonna like see okay the color didn't go on very well so let me dry it one more time and like that so if the color goes on like that you want to let that dry now and i was gonna do the ombre in that but then i changed my mind i'm like man that's i don't want to do that <laughs> I think I decided just to put a gel polish on that. At the po the gel polish that I used to create that color monomer. That's the color that goes on there. And the thumb wants to come out. The little tip, of course. So I'm over here fighting with it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, stay on. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> How irritating. 
I'm leaving this in here so you guys just can see how irritating these hands are. But I do suggest you guys use these if you just got out of school. But eventually, when you know how to at least stay away from the cuticle when you're when you're applying acrylic, you can start trying on people. Just be careful, you know what I mean? Anyways, yeah, so I'm going to apply that gel. The, I did a little uh, mistake here, and when I cured it, I only cured it for 10 minutes thinking, okay, I'm just going to flash cure it so it stays in place, but it didn't work, so it's going to... It's going to not get cured properly with the lamp. So I'm going to have to redo it. So you guys are going to about to see my little mistake here. Don't. Um, I'm going to leave this stuff in here so you guys can see. So yeah. I on a client will probably do it for 30 seconds to make sure nothing happens to it. But because I'm on a nail trainer, it's just irritating to work with. Like I can't stress that enough. But yeah. So here I am putting the second on the ombre faded nail so now you guys can see it's more pigmented and I'm gonna add a little bit more okay watch because I noticed on the side I'm like mm, that don't look like it got cured right so I'm like let me remove it I removed the whole thing and see how easy it came off? That was definitely not cured properly. So we're just going to reapply the gel polish. Beautiful, beautiful color. I love this color. Something about this color. So I'm going to cure it a longer this time, obviously. I think I cured it for 30 minutes the second time. I think. <laughs> There it is. Let's see. Did I cure it for 30 minutes? It kind of seems like I did. Yep, I sure did. Uh, and I said 30 minutes. I meant 30 seconds. I sure cured it for 30 seconds. Okay. Um. There we go. So now we're just adding the top coat. Or like, um, what's that girl that does nail videos? Nail... What is it called? Nail logic? Oh, nail logical. Duh, how did I forget? She's she's so hilarious. She's like, I put the taco. That's what she calls it, taco. She calls top coat taco, like from Taco Bell. So yeah. Anyway, so here I am applying the gel polish. This is actually tac tackless, so meaning it's not sticky afterward. It just it's ready to go. There's no stickiness on top of it. The nail and um. Oh, what the heck am I doing? Something got stuck under there. So, yeah. Like I said, this this nail could have definitely been filed a lot better. It's so, like, distorted looking and so ugly. But it is what it is. I'm about to throw this nail trainer hand away. <laughs> I'm actually just going to start doing videos on my clients because it'll just be easier to work with and probably wait less. It'll be less time to, to, to film because I won't be having so many issues. So yeah, there goes that one. All right, so now we're just gonna cure that one. I will be taking this OPI Chrome Effects pigment that I got at Cosmo Prof. It was $16. And this one's called the Blue Plate Special. Okay. And I noticed because I didn't apply the top coat for more than 10 seconds, it was not going on properly. So make sure you at least apply for 30 seconds and not the full 60, but not 10 either. So 30 seconds and then the, the chrome pigment will adhere a lot better. But I just removed the, um, the chrome and then um, it just went on a little bit better. Okay, and then I'm going to apply the chrome on all the other hands, except for the glitter hand. And yeah, like I said, it's just going on weird because I didn't carry properly, so it doesn't look like it should. So let's remove that again. Oh my gosh, the trial and error of this whole video. <laughs> oh my gosh, kids don't do this at home. Anyways, here we go. So now I'm reapplying it and it looks like it should. And let's apply it to the one that I hate, this finger. <laughs> and then 
Taking it off again. Oh, there goes the hole now. Should we just call this video the fail video? <laughs> the fail nail tutorial. Okay. I just wanted to give you guys like some ideas though that you could try out. There we go. Clean that off. Blah, blah, blah. Let's not let that happen again. Okay. Hear that? Now we're applying the comb pigment, and there we go with doing the same stick over and over. <laughs> All right. So now we, I think we're just gonna apply the top coat, and we should be done with this part. I'm gonna apply the actually sorry we're gonna apply the stones first it's always important to apply the stones first because when you apply the top coat right after here i am fighting with the mia secret because it wouldn't open <laughs> but if you apply the stones after the gel there's more of a possibility that it'll fall but i've actually applied the stones after with the mia secret using the gel resin of mia secret and they don't come off even after applying the gel first and then the stones on top but a lot of people do like to add the stones before the gel because the gel will help like um kind of like encase the the rhinestones or the serratis and it'll help for them not to come off so easily um but yeah so here i am i'm gonna start applying um unfortunately i didn't get to finish all of the little design rhinestones that i did because my phone was dying and my my um camera had to shut off and i was like so upset because when i stopped filming i was like no but um yeah here's i'm just gonna put a big dime in the middle of the pointer finger and two medium ish sizes and then the smallest ones at the end you guys just play around with the rhinestones it's um not that as hard as it seems and what I love about the Mia Secret Gel Resin is it gives you some time to play around with the stones and re like see where you want to put them. But that's why I use the activator spray at the end because it does take so long for it to dry that um that um it might like I don't know they might not adhere as well because they're not completely dry or they'll fall off. I don't know that's what my theory is. So the activator spray actually helps to freeze the diamonds into place, and you won't have to worry about them. Oh, did it dry? Did it not? Okay, guys, and then for the for the um, ring finger, I will just put a small diamond in the middle and do this like little design with like smaller diamonds going around and it looks like a little diamond flower it's so pretty for the pinky i did like the gold foil and for the middle i did this cute little backwards s kind of thing um for the middle one with the diamonds and i just kept the thumb with the chrome so you guys hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to subscribe like this video for more bye guys